What up though? I'm Fashan Vega, and this is Great by Design, the YouTube channel, podcast, and our clubhouse where we explore what is design, who are designers, who is it for, and who needs it most. And today, we explore you. Today, we're going to be talking about a deeper understanding of a book by Simon Sinek, his first book he released quite a few years ago, which swept the world by storm and is still causing a phenomenal impact. One of my favorite books and something that I'm able to lean on when giving speeches, lectures, or working with clients. But we can take a deeper dive into that process. Start With Why is this absolutely wonderful exploration and discovery map for anyone needing to navigate through life to find the purpose that they're passionate about. But the key word there is anyone and they. These words point to self. And before we can focus on why, we have to know who, who's why. Most of us arrogantly assume we know who we are, even though actually doing no discovery on self. This overlook leaves us susceptible to a life riddled with experiences that don't serve us. The true us, and even the one we perceive ourselves to be, the one assigned to us. What we have to understand is the first seven years of life means everything to a developing human. In those first seven years, we begin to explore and watch. All we do is observe and take in. We as individuals, as spirits, as minds, all we do is absorb, soak in, and receive information and begin to figure out where to place it in our mental and personality structure who we will become. The most important who we have are our parents or or our guardians, the people who care for us, who, who are supposed to care for us. These are the people that we're going to be around most. Also means anyone living in our household, siblings or other family members. These people have a grand impact on who we become because we are literally learning how to be a human based on their behavior, based on their philosophies, based on how they move. We're learning what is the order of operation in society our first tribe that we belong to. Next is media. Media is important because media usually governs the psychological perspective and behaviors of everyone in our environment. Our household, our neighborhood, our schooling system, our friends, everything. And even how businesses and other institutions are ran, our city is, is based off what the normalities are in our society. The next one is community. We kind of covered that. Then you have school. School is a big one because once we start going to school, which around the age of four, between four and six, depending on where you are, then we come together with other people from other households, with other communities. And based on media that has shaped that community and that structure, we begin to see a redundancy in ideas, which strengthen the perspective, which can be problematic because now we accept these normalities that may or may not necessarily be great for us. Why is this important? Understanding this information is important because with it, we can then decide, do I see something wrong with this idea? And do I want to change it? What will I do with the truth? Discovering the truth is extremely important because we perceivably base our life off of what we think is the truth, even if it's a lie. Understanding this information allows us and gives us the ability to choose. And what we choose is up to us, whether we want to continue to live in the perspective or we choose to do something different. See, in the first seven years, we begin to develop understanding or perspective based on the things that's fed to us and based on a little bit of our biology, right? What was given to us through our genealogy with our, from our parents. But what's in our environment the first seven years plays such a big role in who we become. Understanding that gives us the space to choose who we want to be. If we choose to believe something or know something, and just a little sidebar, the word believe is ideally the word belie. It means accepting a lie as a truth even though you know it's a lie. The issue here with most of our belief systems is that we don't know that they're lies. And when they're presented to us as lies, we tend to defend what we actually don't know. We we tend to defend our beliefs because we believe that they make up so much of who we are that challenging that idea is literally challenging who I am. And this process is actually doing that. What this does, knowing this truth, gives us the ability to choose realignment with the truth. Our true selves are actually desiring 
to be aligned with what is truthful, what is natural and organic for us. Organic is not just about the kind of food that we eat, but it's about the ideas that we have take on and how we think. Organic free thinking is really important. And we're not able to get to our why without knowing who we are organically. Why is realigning ourselves with the truth important? Simple. So we can become our greatest selves so we can know exactly who we are, exactly why we came, exactly what we are to do, and exactly why we should be doing it and why we do it. In Simon Sinek's book, Start With Why, on page 14, he tells this story about some American automakers who went to Japan to look at the process on how these Japanese engineers were producing their vehicles in the assembly plant. And they noticed that there was a step missing. In this process, to make sure that the doors were aligned when they were put on the vehicle. In America, the assembly line worker would take a, a mallet and kind of tap the door into place to ensure that there's proper alignment. In Japan, this assembly line, that didn't exist. And the American automakers found this very peculiar in act. And the Japanese tour engineer replied, and I quote, we make sure it fits when we design it. Simon goes on to say, they didn't examine the problem and accumulate data to figure out the best solution. They engineered their desired outcome. If they didn't achieve their desired outcome, they understood it was because of a decision they made at the start of the design process. The Japanese engineers made sure the door fit by design. Things in our life need to fit by design. They need to make sense for us on purpose. We, we in the world need to fit by design. We need to fit in our communities, our families, our relationships by design on purpose. So solutions, we need to take inventory. What you can do to start this process is first write down five limiting beliefs that you have about yourself. Write those things down and then try to trace back to when you started believing that limiting idea. For example, I can't draw. Try to remember the first time you had that thought and what happened around that space. Do that for all five things. Two, ask three friends to name three things that they love about you and three things that they would change and ask them to be honest with you and be prepared to take on that information with no bias, only research for you to become a better person. Once you get that information, ask yourself and look through the data and say, does any of these things repeat themselves? Take note of the things that do. Then ask yourself, does any of the things that were mentioned connect to the limiting beliefs that I wrote down? If there is a coinciding incident, well, there's a common denominator that should be explored. Last but not least, write down 10 characteristics that you would like to embody or express more in regularly. Managing these things you've discovered about yourself, you'll be better able to manage. Well, you, your what's, how's, and why's. Conclusion, start with you. There is no why without you. Your why is fueled by you. So let's start with that. Well, it's looking about that time, and I'd like to thank you for yours. I'm Fishan Vega, and this was Great by Design. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. As always, lead strong, be now, think great, define, design, repeat.